they have many enemies, not one. They have a lot of people calling these things out. You know, they have, they have been censoring all of these people because it's easier to censor than just go and eliminate every, you know, uh, person saying uh, bad things about them. It's too hard. They cannot, you know. They, so a, a, a part of staying safe, I think, is going, going public, being transparent and being, you know, say the things that you know and you want to say and that, that you think that they must be said. And I mean, they, have, they haven't done anything to you. And that's because, you know, you're, you're saying the things you want to say. And, and it, it, would be, it would be too expensive for them. For them. They, 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 it's, it's, more, it's, more, it's cheaper for them to smear you, to say yeah. bad things about you, to have people think that you're a bad person, which you're not. But it's easier for them to do those things. Go and straight and eliminate you. That would be, you know, too messy. And it will probably be against their own plans. So I, I really think one way to stay safe is being true to yourself and saying the things out loud so people can, you know, listen to them, make their own decisions about it and know what you stand for. So it would be a, a little more expensive for them to eliminate all the position in front. <laughs> you have to you kill know. a lot of people. Exactly. Although, of course, the, its corruption is more sophisticated. They will not, you know, carry money in a plane. They would do right. other things, you know, uh, book deals, you know, speeches, uh, speeches, you know, um, art. Yes, they will. Yeah, yeah, they, they will sell paintings. Or, you know. <laughs> so, so you know, it's it's more sophisticated, but but it's it's higher. It's 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 hundreds of millions of dollars in in these things. Uh, probably billions, of course, billions of dollars in these things. So you would see that weapons, I mean, weapon deals, uh, pharmaceutical deals. I mean, you would think this billion, not 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 one billion, but this billion dollars contracts and with for weapons, for pharmaceuticals, for mainstream media, for you know, you name it, right? For everything, for um, nation building, for a lot of things, even mercenaries. I mean, this is huge, huge industries. So you didn't uh, start life in politics. No. I don't think your family's political, you're from a business family. You were in business. Uh, you did a bunch of different things in business. And then you got elected mayor, I think, of your hometown. Yeah, yeah, of my, of my not my hometown, but the the, the the town I live. The town that you live. Yeah, I live in a in a, a small city in the outskirts of the capital. Yeah, it's called Novo Cuscatlan. I was mayor there first, and, and then, then you're mayor of the capital city. Then I ran for mayor of the capital, and then I was ousted by my party, which one of the, was one of the two main parties. We had a bipartisanship, like in the states. Yes, we had a bipartisanship over there. There was I was ousted. I was kicked out from my party. And, uh, For criticizing its leaders. Yes, yes, definitely. And I, we, so we make a new, we made a movement out of you know common folks. We got the signatures. We made a new party. We won the presidency in 2019 with 53 percent of the vote, which was considered for us it was a wow because we just uh, destroyed bipartisanship in the two-party system in El Salvador with a 53 percent of the vote, but. Now, when you look back, actually 53% was only half of the people. So, yeah, so yeah we, I mean, we, we, had some, we had enough support at the time. We thought it was a lot, but now we, now we, we see it was only half. But we have, we've been working all, uh, ever since, and, and I know uh, people seem to, seem to like what we're doing. Uh, well, yeah, you're the most popular elected leader in the world by far. Um, you've had credible approval surveys putting you over 90%, which I really only exists when you hold guns to people's heads, so I'm, and you're not, so it's, it's an amazing thing. What's surprised you about politics now that you're running a country? What were you shocked to learn? Uh, the scale of corruption. Yeah. I would, I, I would, I would, when I was a kid, I would, I would watch politics in my country, of course, in other countries, in the US, in the world. And I always thought that, you know, Latin America, you know, everybody knows Latin American countries are filled with corruption. It's like very corrupt yes. pol political system. It has, you know, 
Pres and not only Latin America, we saw the president of Afghanistan uh, fleeing his country with a plane with like $100 million in cash or something like that. They had trouble getting off the target. Yeah, because he was, he, he was, carry gold, he was carrying gold and diamonds. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, this politics in the third world, they ver they're very corrupt. Everybody knows that, you know. Latin America, Africa, some Asian countries, they're very, very corrupt. But you would, I thought that, you know, the, the, the first world or, you know, the developed world, they didn't have corruption within their political system just because you have checks and balances. Yes. You will have, you know, investigative agencies that will go after. I mean, if a president flies in his plane with a hundred million dollars in cash, you won't see that in the States. I no. Mean, no US president has ever flown in a plane with a hundred million dollars in cash. <laughs> I, I would bet. I mean, I don't know, but I would bet no, no, no US president has I would bet that too. Yeah. So because it's, so, so I thought, I said, w once this third world countries achieve that level of purity in their, that's what I thought when I was a kid, like very innocent uh, and naive person. I thought once uh, our countries achieve that level of purity in their political systems, then these countries will be developed as well. But what I really found out is that the more money a country has, the more corrupt it is. Although, of course, the, its corruption is more sophisticated. They will not, you know, carry money in a plane. They would do right. other things, you know, uh, book deals, you know. Speeches. Uh, speeches, you know. Um, Art. Yes, they will. Yeah, yeah. They, they will sell paintings. Or, you know. <laughs> so, so you know, it's it's more sophisticated, but it's, but it's it's higher. It's 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 hundreds of millions of dollars in in these things. Uh, probably billions, of course, billions of dollars in these things. So, you would see that. Weapons, I mean, weapon deals, uh, pharmaceutical deals. I mean, you would think this billion, not 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 one billion, but this billion dollars contracts right, with for weapons, for pharmaceuticals, for mainstream media, for you know, you, you name it, right? For everything, for um, nation building, for a lot of things. Even mercenaries. I mean, this, this is huge, huge industries. They have two sides. There's the people in the private sector and there's people in the you know, in government. So the people in government must be getting their cut. And their cuts should be huge. And we just mentioned a couple is what we can see. But of course, there's the other that we can't see. And... So once you learn that actually corruption is everywhere, it's not only in the third world countries or not only in, you know, uh, puppet presidents, but actually also in the puppeteers and more so in the puppeteers. Of course, the puppet will get a, a smaller cut. That's why he takes the bags with the money because it's his cut, right? Yeah. So, so he gets the smaller cut, then the other guy gets a bigger cut, then the bigger guy gets a bigger cut. Then the bigger, the biggest guy gets the biggest cut, right? So, once you understand that most of the political system is uh, corrupt, then you understand um, how you should behave in front of that corrupt system, uh, knowing that, of course, you're not corrupt and you want to fight it, but you don't have the strength to fight it but at least you can keep your people safe from it and you can do the best you can from your work and try to stay safe. Um, that's, that's, I, I think can, that's enough in, 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 in Can you stay? I mean, I, I wonder about that. Um, I mean, I agree with everything you just said. And I grew up thinking that problems like corruption or political assassination, these were all features of Mexico. Yeah. Right. I don't think that anymore. Um, but the fact remains, you are out of step, not on the small things, on the big things, like monetary policy, you know, what our economy should look like, um, and what democracy is, you're out of step with, you know, some of the biggest players in the West. So does that make you concerned at all? Yes, yes, it does. But, you know, uh, 
part of his, I think part of his staying safe, I mean, we, we never know, God knows, I mean, what will happen. But part of his staying safe is come out in public and say the things. Yes. It's, you know, it's harder, I mean, they, they have done it before with a lot more important people, so they can do it, of course, but you know, they, have, they have many enemies, not one, they have a lot of people calling these things out, you know, they have, they have been censoring all of these people, because it's easier to censor than just go and eliminate every, you know, uh, person saying uh, bad things about them. It's too hard. They cannot, you know. They, so a, a, a part of staying safe, I think, is going, going public, being transparent and being, you know, say the things that you know and you want to say and that, that you think that they must be said. And, I mean, they, have, they haven't done anything to you. And that's because, you know, you're you're saying the things you want to say, and and it, it would be it would be too expensive for them for them. They, 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 they it's it's more it's more it's cheaper for them to smear you, to say yeah. bad things about you, to have people think that you're a bad person, which you are not. But it's easier for them to do those things. Go and straight and eliminate you. That would be, you know, too messy. And it will probably be against their own plans. So I, I really think one way to stay safe is being true to yourself and saying the things out loud, so people can, you know, listen to them, make their own decisions about it, and know what you stand for. So it would be a, a little more expensive for them to eliminate all the position in front. <laughs> you have to yeah. kill a lot of people. Exactly. Last obvious question, but. Since we do have so many Salvadorans living in this country, um, how, ma how many how many Salvadorans live in the U.S. Do you think? Two point five million. Two point five million. It's a lot. Yeah. Um, and they, at least according to the polls, agree with you. Yes. Yeah. That's really interesting. Like, how did we miss that? How do we miss that all these? At least speaking for myself, I agree with you. So I didn't realize that we had millions of Salvadorans here, legally and illegally, who agree with you and me. Like, yes. when did that happen? Well, I think, you know, there, there, are, there are things that probably some Salvadorans we don't, won't agree with you or me. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, there's fundamental human values that are universal. And there's, there's, there's a reason why they, why they are universal. If you're a believer, you would say God. I would say God myself. If you're not a believer, you would say nature, you, the universe, you know, the, the order of things. So there are things that are universal. And these concepts that are logical, universal, they have been like that all of, you know, for all of civilization. They, uh, there's a huge, I mean, the system or the, the ones in power, they want to change that. They want to change these universal concepts that are very strong within everybody. So even though, you know, a Catholic might, be, might think different than an evangelical Christian, for example, they we have some of the same principles within them, themselves, you know, like you, know, you pay your debts, you take care of your neighbor, you, you know, you, you care for your family, you protect your family, you know, you raise your kids. There's some fundamental values that are very important. You protect your wealth, your saving is good. You know, we can go on for hours. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's fundam very fundamental values, like stealing is bad, killing is bad, you know, uh, raping a child is bad, but you know, there's, there's even, you know, movements about that. So, with those fundamental values that are so dear to most of the people in the world being under attack by the elites, a lot of people are saying, hey, this guy, he's in a very good position. But he's not a member of the elites. Actually, the elites hate him. Your case, right? And he's saying the truth. He's saying the things I believe are true. So I agree with him. So sometimes you would you would find support or or people that agree with you in places you don't expect it, just because they we are all human beings and we all have the same values. Amen. 